Hello everyone and welcome back to another Jimpooty Jams. It's me, Pro Wolfie, and I'm here with Zenra. Hello everybody. And we're here to talk about everyone's favorite game, Jimpoochie Heroes. Should be everyone's favorite game if it's it not. It should be. I laugh. It fucking rules. It does really rule. And speaking of ruling, we're going to get right into it. Because they decided to destroy all our plans for waiting and say, hey, what if Torco was the next limited? And I think both of us went, fuck, at the same time. <laughs> literally loudly at the same time. They literally put out a roadmap. And we're looking at this roadmap. And we're like, oh, this shit is great. We've got, you know, Bleach is coming up. So Bleach is probably after this, too. Yeah. Which is like and- back to back with Torco. What a sh- yeah, and I was looking at it going like, oh man, Hot Spring event, perfect for what I want. It was looking like November November was going to be perfect for both of us, plenty of time to save, and then they just dropped down a Torico with such amazing force. And just really- right there. They literally, they dropped that roadmap, and I was like, oh cool. So, you know, this event's almost over, and then we'll just uh, bounce out, and you know, we'll have some some little stuff before Bleach starts soon. And then literally that night, they're like, hey, it's Torco. <laughs> yeah, and... The Just fun- right in my face. Did you have the same reaction I did when they announced, like, oh, the next event's gonna have these four uh, from these four series, One Piece, Soma, a brand new series, and Torco. Did you have the same feeling of Mia going, are they about to release a new Torque? No, no way, right? There's, there's, like, no chance that it's actually a new Torico coming. Because I saw the new series, and I was like, I think there might be a limited, but then in the back of my mind, I was like, I don't want there to be a limited because I'm saving. <laughs> so I was like, all right, let's see what Torco. Maybe it's just a free, to free something. Maybe Zebra will finally get added to the game. And they're like, nope, limited Torco. This is what you have limited to do Limited Torco, now. and he's really fucking good. Yeah, so we'll get into them. Before we get into them, we do have some small bit of cleanup because we did not talk about Jotaro previously. Zen, very quickly, tell the people what you feel about the part for Jotaro. Uh, stinky, stinky duty garbage. He sucks. <laughs> Sorry. He is the best sprite in the game, but he fucking sucks. Oh, <laughs> such a shame to hear. Yeah, well, we'll leave the source subject there, but I feel like we needed to close the loop on that one. So let's start. Bye, Jotaro. Bye, Bye, (laughs) Jotaro. All right, so this is the uh, autumnal uh, autumnal gourmet festival. That's what they're calling it. Um, It's basically centered around food, and you're collecting, like, a bunch of different food from across different series, it looks like. This actually confused me for a bit, because, like, what what the hell are we talking about? But we're basically trying to make some all-star soup, and if you collect all the soup, you get some cool stuff. Um, yeah, I like that. It, it has, like, Torco vibes to it, where it's like, alright, you gotta get all the fucking crazy ingredients. Yeah, but then it totally to makes the, to- the century soup. Yeah, exactly. And the thing I like is that so they actually went through like different series. So it's not even the series is the series that are involved in the event. So for example, we got the Magic Sword Daikon Radish Blade, which is Don Patch's sword from Boba Bo. That's one of the items. <laughs> uh, the bu- the Bubble Fruit, which is from Toriko. Uh, the Hermit Peach, which is from Hoshienji. The Deep Fried Oyster Flavored Lollipop, which is from Sket Dance. And the Pandemonium from Jintama. I have to assume it's that fucking horrifying looking creature <laughs> that is one of the ingredients i uh, probably yeah i sure hope it's one of those but yeah i think it's really cool and it really does kind of get Torco vibes because Torco would be Torco would gladly eat all these things if it were an option Torco, yeah absolutely he would eat all of them like happily i like, guess yeah i'm i'm hyped for this 100 percent and then we're also we also got like a special stamp from toriko which is fairly fun because i think on in the zen gang it's just people spamming that stamp yep it is <laughs> my entire chat is just people spamming that stamp <laughs> uh we also get the puffer whale judgment which is one of those do it once a day and either you get a golden puffer or one of the the poison puffer whale which is again i think really neat because they even played that little like animation from when they're cutting it to see if it's good or bad, like from using mm-hmm. actual and you get either the, you get either the uh, poison one or the good one. Yeah, exactly. It's cool, really cool. So let me very quickly 
say who are the new characters and then we'll break them down into here are the free ones here we're going to end with Torico basically here are the ones that have their own separate side banner unit and then this is the limited so for free we've got Tepe we got Ikumi Mito and then this is the new guy I cannot pronounce his name at all uh Aijihei Shiomi I believe is how you would pronounce his name uh, I'm going to take a wild guess <laughs> uh, this is another one that unfortunate because this is a Toriko character's name Ichiryu is that how you say uh, his name Ichiryu yeah Ichiryu okay good thank god I like got like Ichigo but with Ryu instead of Go oh okay and to keep up with that this one's easy Coco uh, Sanji but this time from uh, Cake Island Sanji um, Charlotte Pudding which I completely forgot to mention because she was not in the new units because she's not out yet <laughs> Uh, Ishii Tsukasa and the new Toriko. Uh, did I miss anyone? Yes, there is someone. Hisako Arado from Shigeki no Soma. That was one of the ones I forgot because they haven't had their info out yet. So yeah, let's start mm, with the free characters. Yeah. The ones that are out right now are... This one, I'm going to start with this one because I think you had the funniest reaction to it. It's a Ikumi Mito from Shigeki no Soma. And I think you immediately oh asked, what the hell is going on in Soma? <laughs> yeah, I, I've never seen uh, Shokugeki no Soma. So I was like, all right, what the fuck? Why does she look like she's about to go out in like a bikini wrestling match? <laughs> and she has like a an American flag bikini on under her school goal uniform. Yes, this all sounds great. Um, if you don't know who this character is, first of all, I think she is, I believe, under the category that would be considered gal. I don't think Gyaryu is the official thing for her because I feel like there's a difference between the two depending on who you ask. So I'm just going to go with like a gal. She's basically brown skinned is the way to see it. It's Japanese but with more brownish skin. Um, as Zenrot said, she has the American flag, and then I think on the American flag bikini, and then she has another bikini which has, like, flames on it <laughs> underneath. Yep. It's, yeah, it's like a, like a hot rod flame bikini. Yeah. Uh, she's a free character, and I'm glad she was free, because I was really, really thinking, oh man, I'm about to actually go into the other banner and try again after getting the Jin Gentama character, like four times last time trying to get one of the um uh characters on rate up i was i thought i had to go back to this banner but no thankfully she's free but it was pretty funny seeing you go like i have no idea what the fuck is going on in shigeki no soma because it really did. yeah i was literally like oh is this about cooking and they're like hey look at this uh, titty lady yeah that it turns out that uh shigeki no soma from what i understand it because i've read little bits of it and i had a friend who was really into it, and I've also had multiple friends who were really into it who then got immediately disappointed by its ending. Um, it's basically, like, food, but then the joke is that the food is so good. It's kind of like Torco, where the food is so good, they enter a, enter a state of nirvana, except for in <laughs> Soma, they enter a state of orgasm. Oh, so, Jesus Christ. All right. But it's also both male and female characters, so it's both, like, when a dude eats it, they get, like, super naked, and they're like, this is amazing. <laughs> this is the greatest <laughs> flavor I've ever had. <laughs> a chorus of angels fall down as they go, oh, my God, <laughs> this rice, <laughs> it's delicious. It's incredible, actually, but in a bad way. I'm never going to read it, but it sounds <laughs> funny. It really does feel like one of those mangas that's just like, in every sense of the way, it's like, uh, not your thing. <laughs> Uh, but for me, totally my thing and sounds great. Funny enough, I've never actually read Soma. I've just seen those pages and gone, man, I should read Soma. And then once the ending of Soma happened, everyone was like, oh, God, what have you done? What? <laughs> Why did you yeah. do this? And it, it almost feels like, I don't know if it's on the same level, just because when it broke bad, I feel like it broke a vast majority of people. But it kind of reminded me of the Attack on Titan ending. Where it immediately dropped and everyone was like, like Andy throwing away Woody. <laughs> they were just like, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if it's, that's how I get, that's the feeling I get for it. But, you know, maybe one of these okay. things I'll actually pick up. But yeah, there you go. She's free. I like that she's free. I like girl characters like this. I think, I don't know, remember if I said this before, 
But I really dig a Japanese lady wearing an American bikini because I think it's the fucking funniest thing. Because usually they also got a huge wreck because the Japanese people are like, no, the reason they're repping the American flag is to let people know that they represent America and all its ideals. America and all its ideals. <laughs> yeah, that would usually just be it's they're very huge, Justin. Which I'm like, thumbs up. I'm here for it. Plus, again, there's not a lot of brown characters in uh, manga in general. It's like Chad and a bunch of women. Those are the two <laughs> that you got. <laughs> That's actually true. Yeah, when you actually stop and think about it, it's like, oh, man. At least even though this person is probably 100% Japanese, hey, brown is still good for me. <laughs> I'll take it. And speaking of brown, we got Ichiryu from Toriko. He's also free, which I think is kind of crazy. <laughs> Because I would think he would yeah, totally be Yeah, I was worthy. not expecting him to be free, but yeah. it's cool that he is. Maybe it's because it's not the... This is minority world version of him, so maybe they're saving the big... Because let me tell you, this character, if you do not, have not read Toriko, first of all, stop here. Go read Toriko, because Toriko is awesome. Yeah, Toriko fucking slaps. Toriko is so cool. So good. And he's definitely one of the like strongest characters in Toriko. So maybe it's one of those things of, like, he gets a free one, and then maybe when they decide to do Toriko again, they'll probably do a limited version of him? I don't know, but either way... Well, the next, a... the next Toriko event's gotta be Zebra, right? Because he's not in this. It has to be Zebra. Yeah, actually, I was actually thinking that this is going to be the case of where they're going to pull the gun and release Zebra. Because we have all of the all of the main except for Zebra. He's, like, literally the last person to be added. Like, of the, of the five group, he's the last one. <laughs> We have everyone else. Um, but yeah, HRV, I'll gladly take a free one, man. He got his own special stamp. I think it's really cool. As I've said before, he really looks a lot like a Hulk Hogan that I can actually get behind. He totally does. He, yeah, he's a Hulk Hogan without the, the racism. Yeah, without the racism and the weird porn tape so I can feel like good about supporting him. Well, except for the, you know, similar to Kenshin and <laughs> when you ever you bring yeah. up Toriko, you have to bring up that. But I'm specifically saying supporting this character from inside Toriko, not the actual person who made Toriko. Two different things. Um, but yeah, I haven't actually done his event yet. Do you know if it's hard? Is it super hard? I feel the ones for the previous event were pretty easy, but it's because the, a limited uh... ticket was done behind them. Like, Kira was pretty easy. But because he was, like, tied to a limited ticket, I feel like they made him a little bit more easy for some people. Like, easy intentionally? Yeah, uh, I, I've only done um, Ichiryu so far, but I, I think he's about as easy as the other ones. Okay, fair Maybe enough. a little harder. He, he hits pretty hard, like, if you don't bother to pay any attention to what he's doing. Yeah. Um, but I just brought a healer in. I'm fine. All right. And also, if you have I also new... have Toriko, though. Yeah, I was about to I, say. I don't, if, you... if you don't have Toriko, he might be a lot harder. I don't know. The new Toriko is 100% built to kind of go with him and <laughs> defeat him easily. That's kind of how they build the limiteds. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to get him because I definitely would do want him. And in terms of another free Toriko character, because they just keep piling him on, uh, Tepe. And then it made me realize now that we have Tepe, we don't have uh, Jin at all. We don't. There's actually a decent chunk of Toriko characters that we don't have. Yeah, Toriko uh, characters in general are just not like super well represented. I don't know why we don't have um, Zebra or like Knocking Master Jiro, or because yeah. Jiro is in the same arc with Coco that they're doing this puffer whale thing for so why not bring him out yeah may as well even if it's just a free old man version you don't want to do the maybe it's one of those things of like the super ripped version or the young version or the super ripped or the super crazy wolf looking version yeah whichever version they want to do yeah i think it's probably one of those things of like uh maybe it, it's weird to say because i want to say torco it you it, it was heavily promoted back in the day because the dude who made torco was friends with um oda right which is why toriko got such like i at least that was always what i understood it as is that the toriko guy and oda were friends and that's kind of why you saw a lot of stuff of like toriko with luffy and stuff like that and it was pretty they, heavily promoted uh, yeah they they are friends there's uh, actually a kind of a neat crossover that is um toriko 
One Piece and Dragon Ball. Yeah, so I, I'm because I saw that special, and when you actually think of it, like in the in the sense of like, oh yeah, these three together, which one unfortunately does not belong, it's Torko. It really feels uh-huh. like it would probably be someone like Bleach if you were thinking like in hindsight or Naruto or something like that, but it wasn't. It was Torko. So that's why in my mind I was always like, I think Tor- Torko did in its period was very popular. But unfortunately, like, near the end, it couldn't, like, keep going. Because I think that's also why we didn't get the rest of the Beast. We only got, um, Bambino. Right? Uh, that sounds right, yeah. Yeah. So I feel like Torco is popular, but at the same time, like, in the modern day context, outside of the, the, outside of the Neo influence, is Torco actually popular? <laughs> I mean, it is on the list of highest-selling manga of all time. It's not very high up on the list. It's over 20 million copies, which used to be a lot in the era before Demon Slayer. Oh, fair enough. It sold more than Black Clover, I'll tell you that. Oh, okay. You know what? If we have this many Black Clover characters, then we deserve more Toriko characters. It might be a case of just because it's not modern and there's no... They're never going to do something again with Toriko. Maybe they give less characters from Toriko, but it's still loved enough that they're willing to give it a limited under the guise of a cooking event. Maybe it's one of those kind of dealies, but... Um... We should get some more later on. But yeah, Tepe, I'll gladly get him. I don't know what kind of event he's doing. I want to say it's like a normal... He rival. is a... He's an exchange event. So it's sort of like... Uh, oh, Komatsu is also going to be in the exchange, which is cool. But you farm up a bunch of meat, and then you trade meat for dupes of him, and then you max him out that way. Oh, okay. That sounds good. I'll gladly take that. Yeah, he's he's one of the ones where like if you have the right characters in your team, you get a higher amount of drops for the meat. So there'll be, like, other stuff in there, too. There'll be, like, jewel shards and scrolls and stuff, and then just also Tepe copies in the shop. All right. Sounds good to me. I'll gladly take a free Tepe. I I like that he was added. Even if there are other Toriko characters when I think about it, he's still a pretty cool character. (laughs) Yeah, I like Tepe. Yeah, him and his uh, crazy hair. The same uh, hair as Jiro. All right, let's go. Next one we've got... This is the guy who's 100% new. That's right, you guys were all asking for brand new manga series, so they listened and they added in from Hoshijin Ajihei Shiomi. This is what everyone was wanting, right? This is what all the polls yeah, were asking for. Yeah, I'm dying for, the, for whoever the fuck this is. Uh, I've actually, I feel like I've seen him before. He looks very familiar. But I think he also just looks like every manga character from that like time period. I was going to say it looks almost as if uh, Ashita Nojo and yeah um, like Hajime no Ippo sort of art style character yeah like one of those type of characters but if Ashita Nojo and uh, the big boy did a fusion dance I think that this is the character that you would get <laughs> uh, I really do like the look of him though to be honest there's like something like just like yeah like so happy about yeah, it yeah he's very happy dig. We are kind of making fun of the fact that, like, oh, yeah, this is the series everyone wanted. But to be honest, kind of looking at him, I'm down for it for a free character. <laughs> he seems like a fun guy. Just looking at him. He seems happy, and I'm always someone who digs this style of art, this art style. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he looks fine visually. I mean, I mean, he's a 99 luck farmable, so he's not really going to be any good, usually. No, but. You got to give props for giving an actual, like, very weird character. I think that's the fun thing about a lot of, like, crossovers is that, yes, there is extremely popular characters, but then you also need a Mr. Game and Watch. You need someone in there who's just like, oh, yeah, this character. Sure. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) Let's go for it. Um... And next, speaking of let's go for it, we've got Charlotte Pudding from One Piece. That's right, Zen. It's once again time to talk about One Piece because they've added another One Piece character. <laughs> they add a One Piece character every time we do this show. <laughs> they do. Uh, this is uh, Charlotte Pudding. She looks like she is from the Cake Island arc because I think actually she shows up in a different arc, but she's much younger in that one. And uh, she is technically in the background. She's one of those characters when One Piece people say like, yo, this character showed up in chapter 200 looking like this. And then so many chapters later, it's like, oh, no, it's that character again. And (laughs) like 400 chapters later, this character showed up again after the one brief cameo they made. 
something something Oda foreshadowing something something. Yes, exactly. Uh, she was supposed <laughs> to, she was supposed to be the wife of Sanji, and then some bad stuff happened to Sanji, and then we get the famous Sanji tremendously down uh, panel where he's smoking in the rain because the woman he thought he loved basically said, "You're fucking trash, bro." And I'm gonna kill you on our wedding day. Damn. Well, he he didn't say it to his face, <laughs> but when he found out, he was like very broken up about it. He was very sad. Well, I think that's understandable. Yeah, he's a very sad boy. Um, I actually like Charlotte Pudding just because of how unbelievably evil she is. <laughs> she is like maybe one of the most uh, good-looking evil women Oda has ever made because he usually does not make pretty evil women. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, she uh, doesn't have the standard One Piece evil woman look of being, like, grotesque and monstrous. Yeah. So the thing that she does have, which she's hiding here, is that she has a third eye. She has the TN eye. So um, when she parts the hair, and I think you see it in the wind animation when you use it, because it's definitely in the Chaputi home screen. She has a third eye, and on the wedding day, she was planning on killing him after revealing the third eye. And being like, "Yo, check this shit out. I'm I'm actually disgusting. Look at my look at my third eye." Yeah, but because Sanji respects women, he goes, "Oh, what a beautiful eye!" And then it basically she goes tumbling down, and then she becomes the simp. And then finally, it's a the the thing everyone's been looking uh, forward he to. Tur he turns it on her exactly <laughs> by complimenting She's her creepy eye. Exactly. Like he legitimately was like, "Oh no, I, I don't see anything wrong with you." Because I think that's actually one of the legit. <laughs> when, uh, there's a lot of those negatives things you could say about Sanji and his possibly misogynistic viewings, but he does genuinely like all women, regardless of how they look or how they are. To him, they are just women, except for that one old mermaid chick where he's just like, "I don't want to see you naked." But I think oh, nice. that's more. They got a golden puffer whale. Sorry, I'm completely interrupting your story. I just did the <laughs> puffer whale, man. I got a gold one. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. That was all thanks to One Piece and we're talking. Um, <laughs> we can all thank One Piece for that. So Got yeah. my five-star ticket. Let's see who I get. It's going to be someone <laughs> shitty. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to guess it's a One Piece character. Okay. Now we're just going to wait to see. Piece. I'm going to be pissed off if it's a shitty One Piece character. <laughs> I'm going to be pretty happy about it, though. It is... Train Hartnett from Black Cat, who sucks. Yeah. So, I didn't but know it Black Cat is good. The character is awful, but Black Cat is good. Read well, Black you... Cat. Well, thank you, One Piece, for that. So yeah, Charlie Pudding is in the game. Very nice. Very fitting. Is also actually a chef, even though she doesn't look like it. So she fits with the theme overall of everything. Yeah, she's wearing a wedding dress in this. Yeah, she is a wedding dress. Which she's... now makes sense, given the story that you just told me. Yeah, but uh, later on, they end up having to make a giant cake... Um, because I think if I remember Cake Island correctly, Big Mom wanted to eat a giant cake. They destroyed the cake, which broke Big Mom, and she entered like a daze. And then Luffy said, "Yo, fuck your mom!" And she and he punched a picture of her mom, which <laughs> broke her mental state. And she went on. <laughs> she went on a rampage, and she was gonna basically. She started eating her own children. <laughs> And she started what the fuck going, is going on in One Piece? And so Sanji and Charlotte Pudding had to team up and make the most delicious cake in the world. And then Big Mom ate it and she was just like, holy shit, this cake is so good. I'm going to go off my rampage. I'm not going to kill you anymore. This is the most <laughs> delicious fucking cake I've ever had. Uh, yeah. What the fuck is going on in this series, dude? One Piece is fucking wild. And I, actually, I've, I think some people are a little bit mixed on Cake Island. I fucking love Cake Island. Cake Island is maybe one of the... It's one of those arcs where it's like um, the main character has to go fight the big bad, which is Big Mom. And because she's a big, ugly woman, everyone's like, oh, he, Luffy's about to fucking stomp. And then it turns out like, no, no one was ready for this giant woman. Are you kidding me? You're all going to fucking die. <laughs> this was such a big mistake. Oh, so Big Mom is like strong. Oh, she is unbelievably strong. She, they, like, I don't think anyone did anything to her. The only way they stopped her was that she decided to go for a cake. <laughs> that was how they decided to stop so her. They, they appeased her via cake? Yeah, and it basically just distracted her. Because when she was actually done eating, she was like, I'm going to go kill those motherfuckers. <laughs> how fucking dare they? <laughs> but yeah, Cake Island. 
And next, unfortunately, since we don't know anything about Soma and she's not in American bikini, um, Hisako Orido. She's yeah, she looks like an edgy, edgy chef lady. She yeah. looks like she's uh, she's one of those that. don't don't fuck with me girls. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. And she's cooking, so good for her. Though it does look, based on this panel, it looks she's, like she's murdering someone. And yeah, not there's definitely like blood on her cheek. It, yeah, I, I'm assuming she's like cutting steak or something, but it definitely looks like she's killing someone. Hundred percent. Wouldn't it be way crazier if we go to if someone from Soma just says like, actually, she is killing someone, and we go like, <laughs> yeah, Whoa, she's murdering in that panel. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> be the biggest mind uh, mind break in the history of the world. But yeah, those are the free characters. Now we can move on to the characters units. everybody actually cares about. Exactly. So, do we know anything about what um, Ishiji, Coco, and Sanji do, or is it just we Orko? most certainly do? We all got right. all of them, baby. Let's start with the Soma character because again, we don't know much about Soma, so I think we can Ishi quickly. Ishii Sukasa. He he's mm-hmm. so, look at such generic looking anime boy. It's got like his his perfectly quaffed silver hair it's just like you you fucker all right yeah. so his ultimate attack is he heals for 256 percent of recovery for three turns blue bubbles have a 40 percent chance to appear as rainbow bubbles for a maximum of two so mm. only two of them but they will do that uh his support slash buddy skill i call them buddy skills apparently everyone else calls them support skills uh reduces the number of turn or i'm sorry convert 10 heart bubbles into yellow bubbles recover 2000 hp or 60000 hp in the tower for two turns reduce the appearance rate of heart bubbles to zero and for one turn reduce the damage received for yellow team members by 1900 or by 30000 in the tower mm-hmm. so he's basically worth um a total of 90000 hp cuz he heals you for 60 and then he blocks 30 okay so he's he's actually worth 90k in the tower which i think is kind of neat um and then his passive is he reduces the number of turns of weakening for himself by two and he boosts the normal attack damage of all the yellow members on your team by 30 Mm percent so that's a pretty good buff to have just like by existing yeah like a support because he is a healer and he's supporting everyone with attack That's, that's pretty nice I don't yeah, know. it's. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think he's bad at all. I think he's oh. pretty cool. Pretty solid healer. I think. I don't know who is the current main healer for lightning. Like, who's the go-to? Do you know? Um, you know, I don't off the top of my head. All right, fair enough. Um, but yeah, seems perfectly solid. I like a healer who can also kind of support attack. Otherwise, I think that's pretty neat. And I'm gonna assume that he uh. F- <laughs> His ult is giving people food, which is always nice. <laughs> which is always a really yeah, funny ult. Yeah, the Soma ults always are. It's pretty good. Uh, next, let's go with Coco. Everyone's favorite. Uh, Coco actually, I think, is pretty good. That's that's Let me good. Pull him up. This yeah. is going to be the first. They're all they're all like pretty decent. I feel like. Uh, okay. So Coco's ultimate is 300% damage to one enemy and for two turns poison them for 220% damage and also for two turns boost his ultimate attack damage by 14%. His support is burst every heart bubble and for four turns boost the attack of this unit's buddy by 51% and for four turns boost the attack of all green team members by 28% and reduce the number of turns of shock for the buddy equipped with him by uh, two. Mm. And then his passive is boost this unit's attack by 17%. At the start of the turn, if the enemy is red, he takes 15% less damage. All right. So the, just... the buddy skill is the one I really like. That's like a good tower buddy skill. It clears off heart bubbles, which generally in the tower just kind of get in the way. Because yeah. you heal with abilities in the tower. You don't heal by popping heal bubbles. And then um, if you're using a green, or like, because I, I mean... Green is not like a super popular tower color, but I happen to use two greens back to back right mm-hmm. in the back row. Um, I use um, shit. I'm blanking on his name. Why am I blanking on his name? I love this character. Uh, Tezuka. Tezuka from the Prince of Tennis. And then oh. I roll from him right into the volleyball boys from Haikyuu. Mm-hmm. So like I get both of those buffs and that's 51. That's 79% attack buff. Pretty good. Mm, that's pretty good. 
Yeah, the the main thing I'm surprised about this Coco is that he doesn't poison. He does. He on does? his ultimate. Okay. Poisons the enemy for for two turns. Poison the enemy for two hundred and twenty percent damage per turn. Okay. Okay. My bad. I must not have heard the the poison part. Yeah, I think he sounds pretty good, which I'm surprised of because I figured because he's Coco, the Jumpy he would would... automatically. Yeah, isn't Coco like the bastion of Toriko? If I'm remembering correctly, a little bit. I don't want to be that (laughs) cruel. Isn't there a joke later on that he's like trying to tell them what his uh, ultimate meal is going to be, and they just like talk over him and don't listen at all? I I think there (laughs) is like a little bit of a running joke of no one pays attention to Coco. I think he is actually the least popular of of the Toriko group. And he's also the only Toriko guy who, like, had his fight completely skipped. Because <laughs> I think he was fighting um, uh, the sucker guy. And he was, like, in a chasm. And then he just shows up and says, man, that was a fight. Like, they <laughs> never showed it. <laughs> sure got him. <laughs> yeah, sure got him. And I think the best explanation about it was, I think, again, Neo said it's because someone was saying, it's like, damn, I wish someone would show Coco. They showed that Coco fight, man, such disrespect. And Neo had, I think, one of the best takes on it ever, which was if you actually look at the matchup, which was him being a poison user and the other person being like a far away kind of takeaway dude, that fight would have sucked ass because it would have just literally been them doing nothing. <laughs> it yeah, just I think, fought- yeah. But, I mean, there people do like Coco, so it's a shame yeah. that he gets relegated to the background so much. Matt, Matt Booty's favorite Toriko character. That's what I remember mm-hmm. him as. That's very true. So, I'm glad to see Coco. I'm glad that they add him, and it looks like if a good buddy skill will take you far if, you, if you're a good buddy. I didn't know that green was an unpopular thing in the tower, but now that I see it's all It's not those... so much unpopular as just, like, a lot of the mainstay tower units are not green. Like, green doesn't have a... Well, it has Cyclone, but, like, Cyclone is not as reliable as Freeze or Fire, so people don't generally use it. Um, and and to be fair, if you get a bad matchup against one of those Fire dudes, you're basically free. Yeah, you just die immediately. Yeah. But uh, that's why I run... My my tower team, at least, is uh, High Dio as the leader, and then it's Adult Toshiro as, like, the second slot, the one that always sets the debuff, and mm-hmm. then it's Tezuka and uh, Hinata and Kageyama. So I, I tend to avoid the red people because the the red Tanjiro, for example, is usually in the slot where he fights against Tanjiro. Yeah, man, that red Tanjiro is a real pain in the ass. Yeah, he's very, very popular. Yeah, I can kind of. Yeah, now that we talk about it, it kind of makes sense. But yeah, glad to see Coco, Coco getting some love. He definitely deserves it as much as like you said, he's kind of like the bastion of the Torco group. He still got in before Zebra, so he'll always have that over Zebra, even though when chances are whenever Zebra gets added, he'll be like a crazy fucking limited and he'll just destroy everything with one uh with one giant shout. <laughs> but either way, good to have him in here. Now finally this Sanji, I believe the third Sanji maybe? Second, I wanna say. Oh, second, okay. Second Sanji, yeah. what does he do? He is... Fun fact about this Sanji, I am pretty sure that in the Taiwan version, this Sanji is limited. Really? Yes, and he's not here, which is not the first time this has happened. Um, Do you remember the Athena PvP shop character, the Saint Seiya girl in the golden armor? Yes. She was a limited in Taiwan and was not in the Japanese version. And also uh, the Mangekyo Sharingan Kakashi was limited in the Taiwan version. It was not in the Japanese version. Hmm... But I, I, I am pretty sure that's the case. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 95% sure that's the case for this Sanji as well. Um, Interesting. So his ultimate attack is he does 145% of his HP as damage that ignores damage reduction, and he recovers 1,500 HP or 10,000 HP in the tower. His buddy skill is to convert a random bubble to a skill bubble and boost its blast radius by one, converts a total of four yellow and black bubbles into red, Reduce the number of turns of guard on all enemies by one, and for three turns, boost the ultimate attack damage of red team members by 15%. And his passive is reduce poison damage received for this unit by 4620. Boost this unit's ultimate attack damage by 19%. He's almost sort of um, the non-limited version of Toriko. Like, they do a lot of the same stuff. Huh. 
<laughs> that is funny <laughs> how that works yeah. out like that. Like they're the same color. They're, I mean, they, he's like the, oh, you didn't get Toriko to counter Ichiryu with. Maybe you'll get Sanji. <laughs> like that's that's the whole thing for Sanji. I feel like, but. Huh. Well, it's funny because if I were to think of. It, like, now that you've put into my mind of, like, this was a limited Sanji, yeah, if there was going to be a limited version of Sanji, I think this version of Sanji is the is the one. This is the character who's had his backstory been building up for, like, 700 chapters, and this was the actual, like, showing up and the actual kind of growth of the character and stuff like that. So it would make sense to make him a limited, and it also makes sense that he's, like, a, in the Japanese version, just a slightly not as good version as maybe not slightly but you know a the b rank version of the torco if torco is an a slash s then this is the you yeah can't afford to get torco but you can definitely afford to get sanji <laughs> you can you can have this sanji here yeah that's cool and I, I like what he does um i like sanji in general like i've said in the Char- c charlotte pudding the see why i kind of like sanji i also love that <laughs> sanji is Based off of Steve Buscemi, and but young Steve Buscemi, so it's before the, like he got super crazy cross-eyed. But I believe that would be Sanji's actual future if Oda's gonna be a non-coward and see Sanji to the end. That All right, be, that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that would be his final form. I think when someone said like, "Oh, they're gonna start doing a live-action One Piece," who? Would you want uh, like a friend of mine was asking who would you want to see in the cast? And I think the first thing I said was Steve Buscemi, Sanji. I don't care about his age. Make it happen. <laughs> we need that. Yeah, exactly. I don't care that he was based off of Reservoir Dogs uh, version of him. <laughs> I need old man doing it now. <laughs> Even if it's only for like a weird cameo of some kind, it needs to be done. So yeah, cool. I like Sanji. Glad to see more One Piece characters being added. <laughs> I think I'm completely out of uh, stuff, though, because I wasted it all on Toriko, and I'm going to have to wait to see if I can get three more multis before that banner leaves so I can get the guarantee. Oh, God, I hope so. Toriko's so good. Yeah, and finally, let's talk about the man himself, the limited Toriko. Go ahead, Zen. All right, so his ultimate is 140% of his max HP as damage that ignores damage reduction. Cut your own HP by 3%. For two turns, boost the ultimate attack damage of all red team members by 20%, and for one turn, boost the recovery of red team members by 4%. So he basically has the same ultimate as Super Spirit Bomb Goku does for yellow, but for red. Mm -hmm. Uh, His buddy skill is convert a yellow bubble to a skill bubble, convert two green bubbles and four block bubbles to red. For two turns, boost the ultimate attack damage of all red team members by 19%, and for two turns, reduce the attack of all enemies by 19%. And then his passive is reduce poison damage received for this unit by 5,500, boost this unit's ultimate attack damage by 15%, and during turns 1 through 5 of the adventure, reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill bubble for him by 2. So he requires 5. Hmm. He's yeah. so good. This Torco sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the tier list on the, the Discord already put him as the number one red unit. <laughs> So really that just like yes, immediate that quick. Yeah. Just immediately. Man. All right. Good for Toriko. <laughs> I would. Right? Never... Yeah. Of all, of all the people to all of a sudden just be godlike. It's Toriko. Yeah, it's kind of like this, the separate feeling from uh, Momojiro. I, I believe that is how you say his name, right? From yes. Uh, the, uh, the strongest blue super overpowered. Yeah. Blue guy from that shit. Nobody knows. <laughs> Yeah, from the thing we can't pronounce because it was never translated into English. Uh, it really feels like another case of that where they're like, listen, Toriko is probably never going to get another limited in a very long time. So we better make this limited one of the best that we got because we need to, one, make it so the people who really love Toriko have a Toriko that they can go like, oh, shit, one of the best. And we need to make it so the people who don't know Toriko go, shit, this guy is cracked. We need to get him now. Yeah, better get him. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's a very good idea on their part. I love what they did. I love this version of Toriko. Um, 
really good job overall, and that ult animation is also very good, and uh, I can't believe that they would do this to me after the troubles of yep. trying to get Giotto <laughs> immediately running into something just so hard. Yeah, I, I can't believe they're doing this to me right before a Thousand Year Blood War. They're like, hey, look, Bleach is coming soon. And I was like, oh, cool. And then they're like, ha, Torco, though, also. So I'm just fucked. Yeah, it's a real <laughs> funny situation, but one I am glad to be in. Uh, hopefully I will be able to find enough. I think I've got at least enough for one more, and I just need to find two more in that period of time. So hopefully it'll work out, but glad to see him get the proper respect that he deserves. So let me see now. All right, so Toriko's there. We both love that he's there. In terms of other things coming to the game, um, it looks like they've got a... Let me just quickly see other news and leaks. They got a big sale pack coming. Two times only per customer. You can purchase 1,500 rupees for 3,680 yen, which I think is like $36, right? Uh, about that. It generally, it's like 100 yen is a dollar. Okay. Uh, popular Tower Choice Pack, the Limited Ticket Sale Pack, a Special Jewel Pack. It's almost as if they're like, all right, listen, you're going to need the a limited lot of ticket packs. sale is actually pretty good. It's like 30 yeah. bucks for 500 and a limited, a guaranteed limited ticket. Yeah, depending on who's on that, I might actually pick that up. And they will help I mean, towards... the, the cover has Yorichi, who's really good. The other one's oh. Kirpika and Bardock. But Kirpika is actually not bad. I, I think Kirpika is okay in the tower. But uh, Yurichi is super good. Like, he's a PvP staple. So. Yeah. Uh, special jewel pack, Halloween sale pack. That jewel pack, it's a little expensive. Like, I'm, I'm speaking from a whale perspective on this. Oh. But um, that that's good. Two, you can buy it twice. Um, it's like 100 bucks. That's a lot of money. But that you can buy it twice. It, yeah. And if you buy it both times, you can max out any character from just one copy to, to completely max. All right. Fair and enough. you get a multi for it. Yeah. And it, again, it's, it definitely is, a, it's definitely a whale pack. It's but definitely at the same a whale, time, but... it's, Yeah, it's yeah. a good whale pack. It's like one of the best ones I've seen. Uh, the Halloween sale pack, in case you want to pick up any of those Halloween units that they have inside the... Uh... <laughs> the shop that they got there though i wish they would probably add some more new ones that would be i nice. think they probably will um i actually am gonna open that shop up because i really like some of these halloween costumes yeah i actually really do like the costumes that they do i think all the costumes that they do in this game are very cute even the one of yeah it's a shame that they're very rarely on like good characters they're usually on like really god-awful characters yeah that's um, the part where it's like oh man it didn't yeah. stop me from buying the the Misa Misa um, Christmas outfit for her though, <laughs> even though I don't use it, I just gave it to her. It was only five hundred. Yeah, I think I think, uh, I think I'm gonna buy the Christmas outfit for Eve from Black Cat because she's a farmable leader, oh. um, and just use her as my lead, so I can just have the Santa <laughs> as my lead. <laughs> uh, It'd be perfect, especially for the coming. Where, up where is that getting shop? There it is. And I also like the uh, characters that just wear each other's clothes. Like uh, Naruto and Deku and Goku and Luffy just swapped outfits. Yeah, that's very good. Again, I would love it if they would add more to it, even though there's still plenty in there I need to get. And they need to add it to... I, think, I wish they would start doing it to maybe some of the limiteds. I think that'd be really cool, too. Yeah, it would be. And also, we gotta point out that they, uh, they have Devil Rukia from the actual anime episode of Bleach when she wore that costume. <laughs> Oh, they do that again. Very nice yeah. touch. Yeah. Uh, next, we got a limited gotcha ultimate attack damage boosters, which is one of those banners where it's maybe if you have none. Oh, yeah. Momotaro's coming back for this one. So they know like, hey, did you miss out on Momotaro and immediately regret it? Yeah. And I think Super Spirit Goku is in there too, right? Yeah. Uh, it is Sun Goku, uh -huh. the, the battle for the whole universe. Uh, Josuke from... Diamond is Unbreakable, and Exodia. Right, the banner is bonkers. Those are all, like, the toppest tier limiteds. Yeah. It's a damn shame I don't have any rupees, because I would gladly yeah. take any of these characters. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's a banner with multiple limiteds on it, so if you, unless you have zero, it becomes risky, because I doubt they're going to guarantee a specific one. Yeah, that's a shame. 
Uh, the popular Tower Heroes gotcha, which is actually kind of crazy because it has um, some of the newer characters on here too. Um, it has, let me see, H H Higuromi, Jitsun, uh, Izawa, Lin Lin Lee, Izuka, Midoriya, the one I think the 20% full cowl, the one that's like got the broken arm. And for Brianna, no, the the full cow one is the one that does the gloves. Yeah, yeah, that's his that's his finger flick, his Air Force or whatever's. Yes, and Ashoshi Shinomaru from I probably butchered that name terribly, but he's Aoshi from Shinomori. <laughs> there you go from Rioni Kenshin. Um, there you go, popular towers. I did. I w I would not have thought that some of these are actually popular in the tower. I don't think I've seen. Except for that Midoriya and the dude that I use, which I think is the dude from Rioni Kenshin. I don't think I've ever seen any of these dudes in the tower. I've seen all of them. As for, like, friendship stuff? That's what mm -hmm. I assume they're for. Yeah, they're 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 all, like, buddies. No one uses them as point characters. Ah, oh, that makes sense. All right, let me see. And I think this is the last one, which is the power, the popular tower limited gacha in its Kenshin. The, um, the one where he looks like a crazy murder man. Which is how... funny because this is one of the limiteds where he's not a crazy murder man. Really? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, this is the uh, Amakakeru Ryu no Hiromeki Kenshin from the final arc of Kenshin, where he's uh, he's where he out. defeats the bad guy and saves the girl and then gives up the sword. Up until uh, the sequel, and then he gives up the sword again. Well, he doesn't necessarily give up the sword as much as he physically is incapable of continuing to use a sword. So like he oh. can't use his sword style anymore because it, it his body's too small. He's Seems like a like little that. tiny fragile boy, and so he's using this like super powerful sword style, and it kind of deteriorates his body over time. Oh, so he's kind of more like a wrestler then. He's retiring, not because he yeah, wants like he can to. still use a sword, but he can't use any of his techniques anymore. All right, fair enough. And yeah, that is looks like everything coming up and going through Jumpudi, man. Uh, yeah, this is a shockingly good celebration for randomly, and especially right after the end of. Yeah, yeah, it's really surprising, and there. It, this is also leading up to the, like you said, the thousand year war for Bleach. So it's definitely going to roll into another like crazy big thing. <laughs> Do you think that one's going to be fully all Bleach characters? Probably. I mean, it's supposed to be a thousand year Blood War celebration. Is there a lot of characters in Thousand Year Blood War that are not? Oh Jesus, game? dude! There's so many fucking characters in that shit. Right, There's no enough. way we're gonna get close to all the characters. Oh, it's one of the, <laughs> one of those style. All right. Yeah, I mean, I'm banking on we're gonna get a limited Ichigo from it because all the Bleach limiteds basically are Ichigo, barring one or two. Uh, we're gonna get Ichigo with his new Zanpakuto. We're gonna get like a Bankai Kenpachi. And some of the bad guys. And maybe like a new or you. Hmm. Okay. That sounds cool to me. So that is it for Jum Shibuti Jams for now. There's plenty of good stuff to go down. I really hope to get Toriko before the end of this celebration. <laughs> and then I can really, for realsy, start saving up for my goddamn hot springs. Which I don't know who's going to be in it. You know it was actually my theory on it? Because you know how it, the beginning of it is a thousand year blood war? Um, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be really funny if they decided for the hot springs, the limited would also be a bleach character and it's the cat lady, but specifically from when she was revealed in the hot springs. Yoroichi, when she yeah. first shows her human form. Yeah. That would be so funny. New limited. <laughs> it comes into bleach. So you go from one bleach limited to a second bleach limited. <laughs> Oh my god, this game would totally do that to me too. That would be really... That was my thought in my head. I'm like, you know, I think they would do something, but who would be, like, strong enough? Like, a character that would be, like, <laughs> a limited worthy Hot Springs unit besides Yuna, even though all her, like, actual limited stuff for, um... It does not actually relate to the Hot Springs. She just so happens to be haunting a Hot Springs. But I think if you actually want to take a character who represents the Hot Springs, I think it's that character's reveal would be <laughs> amazing. Because <laughs> that reveal is so amazing, even I know it, and I have never read Bleach. That reveal is great. That's such a good reveal. Yeah. But we'll find that out next time. 
But for now, that's the end of Jabuti Jams, everyone. Thank you very much for making it this far. If you made it this far, I assume you really like this and you should leave a like because it helps a whole bunch. <laughs> we never asked for it in the yeah. beginning because we always just want to talk about Jabuti stuff right away. But now we're here at the end and we know that you're dedicated. You should do it. Come on. Yeah, come on. Leave a like. Maybe make a comment. Maybe say how cool it is that Torco is in the game. Exactly. Uh, maybe maybe give a little click that little sub button, right? That's what's wrong yeah, with exactly. that. Exactly. A little subscription. Support your local Woking and his increasingly crazy endeavors and what he does for his channel. <laughs> and you can also then go to Zen's channel uh, and leave a sub there, but. I, I assume if you're subbed to me, you're already subbed to Zen. <laughs> That's just not how it goes. <laughs> Make the Venn diagram of sub to Zen and oh, not and not subbed to sub to Wookie and sub to Zen is like basically the same. I think I'm actually living inside of your Venn diagram. <laughs> we are that <laughs> inter interclosed. <laughs> That's it for today's episode, everyone. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.